as you can tell from the picture on my screen, this is going to be an eye tutorial. I'm going to try and get the same quality eye in 15 minutes because it took me a little longer and I can only do 15 minute videos. Um, so this is tutorial is going to most mainly focus on building the skin around the eye, the actual eye itself, and colors and whatnot. This palette really sucks for this background. This is a warm palette from an Aboriginal paint I'm doing. Whereas this background's cool gray, but that really doesn't matter right now. Anyway, as usual, I'm gonna do it from scratch. You guys can see it, so bye bye to this eye. Alright. I. Let me turn this opacity back up. I usually paint my eyes from scratch, so I'm gonna just start out again with just a blank thing and assume that's skin. I usually do the eyes first because. I heard from someone, if the eyes turn out good, the painting turns out good, and I found that true for the most part. Usually, if my eyes turn out good, the rest turns out good. And when I'm drawing my eyes, I use a break at 30%. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so that I can actually see, because I refuse to put my glasses on. And first thing I draw is that little tear duct cornery thing. I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's a cornea. I'm not sure. Oh well. And I draw my eye in. This is going to be a really crappy, sketchy eye because I'm not going to sit and try and draw a really awesome one. Then I draw the eyelids in. I draw the top and bottom one because contrary to popular belief, you do have two. Your top one would have to be really long to close your whole eye. That eyebrow is bad. Even though I hate eyebrows, that's bad. Um, I'm just going to gesture at it. And then I draw in this thing this thing. Um, I'm up too early. Next I draw the corner of the eye and hint at a waterline. Alright? That's the beginnings of an eye. Now I go back to 15% and I'm going to start building up the skin around the eye with blending and colors. First thing I do is pick the lightest color because we're going to do the shines first. And the shine is usually where the skin goes out. I would have to say the hardest thing about building up the eye is actually look, knowing how the eye works. A lot of people mess up eyes because they don't think about their skull in relation to the eye. So, I'm not going to say you should touch yourself, but... Uh, oh, God. Okay. So, generally, if you run your fingers along the underside of your eye, you'll feel a little ridge there that goes in. And if you follow that around, you'll see yeah, there's an entire hole there that your eye goes in. Your eye cannot extend past this hole because there's nothing but hard bone. Which is why I use when people have, like this one actually, really, well this one isn't too bad, I usually do worse. But really long eyes that stretch way into the side of the skull. You can't do that because that bone would stop it. I think your eye would bust if you tried. Anyway, the brightest portions I've found are usually here and through here. <coughs> Maybe like along through here. It really depends on the eye you're doing, where the light source is, so look at references, and also just practice. Do light in different places, see what it does to the eye. Then next, when I'm blending, I usually follow that up with the second lightest color from my palette, and sort of chase that color around without going into it. I'm going to chase it all the way around there, and then I get my third lightest color, and bring that around as well. Alright, now I have the bright portions. Next are the shadowy portions. I start with the darkest and I start here because if you go here, usually you get some shadow because this portion, if you poke it, it goes in a little bit. So I'm going to try and sparingly put it here as well as here. Alright, because those bits go in. Next I pick my second lightest and at this point is where I usually go along the bottom of the eyelid a bit because there's usually shadow down there as well as chase around this other color. And make sure to get some on the eyelids as well because your eyelids aren't just plain brown, they actually have some shadow on it as well. And last, go over it with this final color. Alright, now that I have all my colors down, I'm gonna sit and blend it out. Hopefully I can do this quickly without making it look super brassy, gross, whatever. Uh, let's see, stuff to talk about with eyes. Uh, generally, I would say 
the best way to improve with eyes is one, to do them, of course, and two, look at yourself in the mirror, see how your eyes go, you know how you're supposed to make eye contact with people when you talk, uh, instead of looking directly into the balls of their eyes, look around their eye, look and see how the shadows are going, how the shape is, uh, where the light hits, where the light doesn't hit. I learned a lot by simply talking to my sister, and instead of like watching TV while I'm talking to her or something, I actually looked at her while she talked. That sounds horrible, I sound like a bad sister. But anyway, I actually looked at her while she talked, and I would look and notice, huh, the light seems to hit her nose here, it's reflecting around here. And just generally being around people, if you don't have people you talk to, maybe go on YouTube, look at vloggers, and see you know, when they're sitting, because not everyone's going to have that super perfect lighting that photographs have, and, well, then again, you're making kind of a photograph, so super perfect lighting wouldn't be that bad an idea. This is taking too long. Uh-huh. I don't want to blend it. Uh, I'm going to have to blend it all fast and brassy, because I only have a little bit of time. Sorry. talk this long. Uh, if you're curious about palettes, maybe I'll make a palette tutorial eventually. I wouldn't bank on it though because I'm still learning about palettes and how to make them and how to get them to turn out nicely, but it has a lot to do with your background, which is again why I say this palette really sucks for what I decided to do, but I wasn't going to sit there and make a new palette for a tutorial. That makes me sound lazy. I think that's good, but usually I get my eyelids not to look so blocky, but I really don't have time. Okay, next is the actual eye. I go to the white, but I go a little farther into the gray. Now this is the tricky part, because if you make your eyes white completely, it looks kind of cartoony, and if you make it gray, it still looks cartoony. So what I do is I go over a few swipes, then pick up the color where the gray and skin tone beneath are overlapping, and I paint that color on. And you see it doesn't look too far outside of the norm of an eye color. You know the grayish, whitish eye usually that we have? It doesn't look too far off from that, but reality, the color is this. This is the color you paint your eye. It looks like a kind of dusty, dusty mauve type. Dusty mauve. Anyway, next I actually shadow the eye because some people do it afterwards, but I don't have the hand control for that and I'll end up painting over the eye and screwing it up. But you see I'm shading kind of in a circle because at the end of the day, the eye is bald. If you've ever seen like a horror movie or something like that, when the eye falls out, it's still a ball, even though it's in inside your head, it doesn't make it randomly flat, even though this is very bad shading on a ball. I'm not saying make it obviously ballish, look like you have a marble in your head, but try and shade it in a rounder shape than you would maybe, I don't know, a cheek or something. I don't know. Anyway, I think that's good. Next is the actual pupil. Well, not pupil, but uh, I don't care. Uh, I'll just use it from here. And paint it in. Another thing that I learned from a tutorial with eyes is they said if you can't tell which direction your eye is looking without the pupil, then you might want to erase the eye and start over. Because I've done that where I can't tell a direction the eye is looking in until I put the pupil in and then I get this kind of cocky, bad-eyed look. And it's not very attractive. Alright, now we're going to shade this portion, same as we did the... And... Usually a quarter...
according to your light source is where you would make your shadows and shine go. But I didn't pick a light source for this. I'm just kind of doing this to give you an idea of how I do eyes. So yeah, very bad teacher. Alright, now comes the pupil. A thing to know with pupils is to be careful because the bigger a pupil is, the more dilated and maybe aroused she looks, whereas the smaller ones look more scared, like, that looks like, oh my god, it's gonna get me, whereas a really big one like this is actually, yeah, more aroused. I can't think of a nicer way to put that. Oh crap, did I undo blending? No. next part I do is, <coughs> excuse me, tiny detailing, and it's how I get my eyes to look sparklish. I take a lighter color, I'm still at 15% opacity, and I kind of zigzag it around there. Go lighter, get a tinier brush, and zigzag within there. Go lighter again, tinier brush, and zigzag along in there. It gives the eye a look of more detail. It's what I did with the last eye too, but again, I had more time to detail the last eye. This one's kind of brushed. Now I go lighter with the second brush and put some shine into the eye so it doesn't look as dull and flat before following it up with the major eye shines. I usually do those in white. A little dot of light and then the you can put more light into it than that, but I usually don't, other than this dot and this little wavy bacon-y strip. Alright, now up next is the actual waterline. I usually take the shadow of the skin, add a little pinkish-reddish to it, and use that. And it hasn't filled me too badly so far, so I keep doing it. And I fill in those bases that I drew blending them out to make sure they're not too out there, like this one is, of course. But again, I don't have a lot of time to fix it, so it's gonna stuck. Now I get a darker color and put that in the deeper corners, which would be the outside and that inside up to the top eyelid. Then go lighter and with a 1px brush, go lightly along the inner edge of that to make it look more moist and make kind of longer lines in there. And that's your build up of your basic eye. That's the end of the also mouse friendly portion. The rest is my eyelashes, which I'm not very good at, so bear with me. It took me practice to get to even this. I usually take a brush and I just make, oh crap, I usually make just general curved in lines. You see my lines are even going inside my eye right now. But I don't worry about that because I'm going to clean that up later. Um, again, best thing with eyelashes is to just do it and keep doing it. My first eyelashes are really crap. Usually eyelashes don't curve like this unless they're fake or have mascara and have been curled. And I just do it like this because I think it's really attractive, the whole curved eyelashes thing. For the bottom row, I just kind of pull down in a very stickish manner, but try not to get it too murky. Um, there are ways to do lashes with a mouse. You can do them with the pen tool at a lower opacity. What I used to do is I used to make a black line around there with the smudge tool and stretch it out, but with the tablet I can just make the little stripes. And I erase the inside portions. If I want, I make a dark line of eyeliner around it. This is really dark. Okay. And zoom out. And that's an eye. Yeah, that's basically how I do my eyes. It's from stretch. I learned my eyes mostly through digital painting tutorials, editing tutorials that I learned through looking at people's eyes, um, a bunch of different resources really. So I think that's it. I'm gonna go actually eat breakfast now, and I hope this is helpful to you in some way.